Welcome everybody outside there, yeah, uh, to our next uh, webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers and uh, also in the name of JFT Brokers, a warm welcome. My name Stefan Friedrichowski, as always, you know, complicated last name, so just call me Stefan, that's easier for everybody <clears throat> of us. And uh, yeah, it's nice to have you here to uh, this special topic for today. It's about neural networks. So that's really something um, weird or even something strange. Maybe for the one or the other not, but um, it's a quite interesting topic. Uh, and today, just as a remark before I really start here, today it will be just an introduction talk about, uh, introduction webinar about neural networks. In the final end, I come a little bit for uh, neural networks for trading, but uh, most of the webinar will deal with the fundamentals, the basics of neural networks, because I as always, I just want not only to present uh, something finished, working, and then just showing results or equities or trading strategies. As always, I want to dig a little bit deeper into the topic so that you can try to follow as uh, much as possible. And therefore, it's uh, really meant to be an introduction or talk about newer networks. Um, and um, yeah, but nevertheless, um, first results on trading, uh, you will see as well. So having said that, um, oh, I have to uh, mention the date. We have 12th of April, 2018, uh, 7 p.m. German time, <clears throat> just uh, for the records. As always, uh, the webinar is recorded and uh, you will find from tomorrow morning onwards uh, the recordings of, uh, on the JFD YouTube channel. So if uh, you just want to see it once again, no problem. Uh, it's um, on the JFD YouTube channel. Um, the other remark here already, um, as always, you find my slides um, in the GoToWebinar control panel. So you can download uh, the slides and uh, keep them for your own. And, uh, you know, if you have some special questions, uh, do not do not hesitate here. Do you see my email address? Just get in touch with me directly via email. We may Skype or whatever. So um, just, just an offering um, for additional questions or additional contacts. Neural networks is really something um, yeah, popped up during not the last couple of years. In, in total, it's um, not a really new topic. It's already um, introduced and developed um, nearly 50 years ago. But more and more, the computers and the algorithms are now able to get real results, which are useful. And I personally have been inspired a little bit uh, one year ago um, due to the message um, of uh, the neural network or the deep learning algorithm um, being successful in learning the, the game Go. And um, finally, um, that computer won to, um, against the best Go player uh, around the world. And a couple of months later, uh, they uh, reported that the same algorithm has uh, learned chess as well. Chess is, by the way, something which is already in the hand of computers. So it's more than 10 years ago <clears throat> that uh, computers are better than uh, any human. But um, what they reported has been that within four hours, the computer was able to learn chess by himself or by itself um, just by playing against uh, himself. And after four hours, the computer algorithm has been better than any um, uh, other algorithm or other computer uh, playing chess. And that inspired me to to go into that topic as well, because if you can learn chess in four hours and being better than any other anybody else, um, then it's interesting to use the same kind of algorithms for trading. Um, maybe the learning takes a little bit longer than four hours. I don't care. But uh, in the final end, it would be interesting to see results on learning algorithms um, doing that job simply by by their own and um, being a good trade-up finally. 
let's see uh, where it goes and uh, what comes in the near future, not only for me, um, and I will definitely report on my results here during the webinars, but also from others. Uh, as always, you know, I have to show that slide once, um, the, our risk disclaimer, I talk about trading here finally, and whenever you uh, go for your own trades, definitely you do it um, by your own, under your own responsibility. Um, yeah, having said that, that's fair, and um, I can now go on here. So I want to start with two book uh, recommendations. Um, because I just share uh, what I have learned out of those books um, during the webinar. But uh, if you want to go a little bit more deeper into that topic, maybe the same books would help you as well. At least I can recommend those. Then we, we really start with newer networks from the very beginning. And so the basic idea is that we want uh, we want to adapt the human brain and the logic, how the, a human brain works, how a human brain learns. And uh, that's exactly what we want to do here as well, but now with computers and algorithms. Uh, but we, we take the same kind of logic uh, behind and um, that helps us to develop, to develop neural networks. Of course, then we have to go to, through the, the fundamental logics of neural networks, how they are created, how they are designed, and what aspects we have to, to deal with. If you go the same road by your own, <clears throat> you definitely have to know two um, methodologies, mathematical methods. One is about cost functions that is maybe already uh, familiar to everybody of you um, because we, we use uh, cost functions in our developing of any trading strategy already. Um, normally it's uh, just the equity line or something similar to that. <clears throat> we use here for neural networks uh, more or less the same, but with different naming. The other methodology is called gradient descent, which is a mighty tool in order to solve problems or to solve or to find um, minima uh, within um, in functions which are really multi-dimensional. And even if uh, the number of dimensions is 10,000, uh, you have a very fast algorithm uh, to find uh, minima within that function. And that's something we definitely need for neural networks here. When it now comes to trading, um, I will talk a little bit about some, some additional methodologies we have to apply here. And I also want to talk about, now I, I translate the German word stumbling stones, uh, maybe you call it pitfalls or whatever. So uh, there are some, some uh, things you, we have to, to really be careful when it comes to trading uh, with respect to neural networks. And I will show you three examples. We, the results by my own um, in the final end. Yeah. So those are the two books which have helped me quite a lot. Um, don't worry that the right one is in German. Um, you find the same one in English as well. Uh, the left is already in, <laughs> uh, in English. <clears throat> and I have learned yesterday during the German webinar that now that book is available in German as well. Uh, but anyhow, those two books are really quite helpful in order to go into that topic much more in depth than I do during the webinar. And what you will see is that um, really doing stuff by your own um, related to new networks, then um, yeah, one one choice is to go with Python. Uh, the other one is to go with uh, so-called TensorFlow. Uh, that is uh, something from Google mighty tools, which really make it much more easy to, to go into neural networks for trading or any other stuff, um, because you finally may need only 30 lines of code uh, to create a network, um, teach a network training, and finally applying that network. So that's really um, amazing uh, using those uh, high language um, programming languages like TensorFlow or Python. And uh, they have um, 
libraries, for, uh, especially for neural networks and uh, similar stuff. So uh, very good and well explained uh, in those two books. And I have to mention that a couple of pictures I later show here during the webinar, they are taken exactly from those books, uh, which uh, I appreciate from um, uh, those authors that uh, that's allowed to take out those pictures, but you have to mention them and I will do as you see. Good. So the basic concept of neural networks is to adapt the human brain. And um, within our brain, we have so-called neurons. And those are uh, symbolized here um, in, in, in the picture. And there are two main aspects of neurons. One is they are linked. So they have input lines, inputs. And finally, they have something as an output line. And you see the neurons are linked, they are connected. Uh, not uh, each neuron to each other, but you can create something like, like a signal flow within that neural network. So we have some inputs and they flow through that new uh, uh, neural network. And finally, you have some output. The human brain has that number. Uh, it's always in, um, difficult for a German to talk about uh, uh, numbers uh, in, in, uh, in that uh, high here, uh, because how to call it uh, 100 million or billion or whatever, therefore I wrote it down. So it's uh, huge or it's giga, it's like a gigabyte. It's uh, 100 giga in neurons. And the one or the other may think, hey, that's a lot. And on the other hand, that's not that much. Um, my computer has even more disk space than uh, the number of neurons within our human brain. But on the other hand, they are able to do things in parallel. And that's extremely important and extremely fast. So they are linked. We have inputs, we have outputs. and the, the contact to the outside world, world is all, it's our eyes, our ears, our, our skin. So all sensory organs, they create inputs. And finally, we have actions. If you think already about trading, the final action is to open a trade, long euro, US dollar, stop loss, lot size, and so on and so forth. So, um, in principle, we have a lot of other actions like uh, moving around, like um, um, doing a webinar and or listening a webinar, uh, something like that. But all in common is that those neural networks, they are teachable, so they can learn. And you see a smiley behind my teachable because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work that well, um, that we don't learn. Uh, what we have to learn, but anyhow, um, they are able <clears throat> to be teached and they are able to learn. And the principal learning methodology is reward, reward and punish. Think about um, as a hot plate. Uh, of course, we, you, if you touch that hot plate, uh, you are punished by um, uh, immediately. Or you get rewards, um, f maybe from your parents because you have done a good job in, in school or whatever. But it, it, it works exactly like that. We, we repeat things and um, then we learn. And just another uh, number here, just for comparison, um, um, another uh, another animal here now talking about a bee that has only 900,000 neurons. But think about bees. They can fly. Uh, I cannot fly. And they, can other, they can do other crazy stuff. So it's not only a matter of the number of neurons um, in order to create uh, great things. And um, that's why I think um, going with the same kind of concept to trading only is a, little, um, a thing which is yeah really good. So in principle, any basic model of a neural network network looks like this. Look to those colored circles here. In in this case, I have a neural network with two 
input layers. They are labeled in green here. And think about they get input in terms of numbers. Or if you think about um, um, the human brain, uh, then the input might come from your eyes. So a pixel in my eye might be an input uh, layer, an input node here within that uh, neural network. For us more later, when, when it comes to trading, we might think of inputs like um, price history data, for example. Maybe we look one hour back and put that number here to the first input layer, and we look 10 hours uh, in the history from at a certain time, and then that might be the input for the second uh, input node. Or you can think about news feeds like um, Reuters news feed about um, stock prices or any, any news, um, Twitter accounts, Facebook, whatever. All those might be taken as an input. And finally, for the neural network, it comes into that input node, input layer um, that is uh, the name we use here. Then we have the regular layer. That is the one who does calculations, combinations. And you see already that every of those five nodes here is, uh, each of uh, those five is connected to the two input nodes. And they do something, we talk about uh, what uh, uh, that layer is doing um, in a minute, and then it creates an output. So it combines inputs and creates an output. And finally, we have here only one output layer. And think about trading later. It might say, go long, go short, or something like that. And that's all. Maybe it's just a number. And if the number is positive, it should be the signal, go long. And if the number is negative, maybe the signal is go short. So that is how we will later do it for uh, trading. We might have um, additional output uh, nodes. And then we have not only the decision of going long or short, maybe we have just real numbers like stop loss to be set at 1% away from entry and take profit something somewhere else. Then we might have three output nodes, finally. So you can get more complicated things. Um, but the basic concept consists always an input layer, then the, the uh, real network layers. And sometimes you have even more than one layer. You have hidden layers. They are, uh, they are really called hidden layers. Uh, even they are visible. And might be you have 10 hidden layers additionally. And finally, you have those output. Um, and these the other one, yeah, which really count. Um, all the internal stuff doesn't count anymore because we we use the output finally in order to, to um, judge the quality of our neural network. But that's how it really works. Just that you have an idea of how uh, things are running. Um, I, the, the picture here shows an example of a well-known training set. And um, those, that training set is, is, um, is public and you can download um, those images and what you see here are hand written numbers they are in a small picture and just 28 times 28 pixels and then uh, you see already hmm, that might be for example the input layer um, and finally that input layer would have um, 784 input nodes representing each pixel within those pictures and that data set, you can really download that data set, um, has 60,000 labeled data. What does it mean? And the wording labeled data is quite important. So we know that this number, and you find it in the database, is a seven, and the next one is a two, and then a one, and so on, and so forth. So you know the exact and uh, a result 
or a meaning of each pic picture. You don't have to do it by your own because the computer at the very beginning doesn't know that this number here is a four. Um, but in order to learn it, we have to tell him, uh, the computer, okay, this one is a four. And that is part of the learning procedure. But you see, when, you, when it comes to, to new networks, you always have a huge amount of data. Therefore, um, it's a real big data um, methodology. And what we need, not always, but in our case, we need labeled data so we know the result. Looking already to trading, it first, you might think, hey, I don't know the result of any trade. Yeah, but the good thing is, in the history, we can simulate uh, any trades. So we know if we would have opened a trade at a certain point in time in the past, a long trade, that this trade would run into take profit after three hours. So we, we can look into the history of, of um, price data and create labeled data sets because we know the history and then we might create uh, rules or the neural network might create rules out of that and that should be applied to the future so just that just an example of how you uh, deal with input data and now coming back to what happens within a neuron so you see here is one neuron and that neuron has three inputs, A, B, C. So three signals. Think about just numbers. Those numbers, they are summed up. And uh, what's really been done here is they are summed up weighted. So every input gets a factor. And then we sum them up. And then finally, we apply a function to uh, that input number. And um, that function is normally called activation function because you might think about threshold behavior. If the input exceeds a certain threshold, then it creates a signal to the output. Think about signals, open a long trade, open a short trade or something like that. Or think about human brain and normal actions like um, you realize a hot plate, we move the finger. That's an action, something like that. So, but the, the, the overall behavior is always the same. We combine inputs, weight it, and then we use an activation function, which creates finally an output. And that output might be the input for the next layer and so on. One typical function which is used um, as a threshold function is not a real step uh, function. Uh, it's called the sigmoid function. It's, uh, you see in the right-hand picture here, uh, it's a typical uh, S-typed, uh, S-shaped behavior. Um, so it's uh, zero at minus infinity and plus one at plus uh, infinity. And it's not a real threshold function. But it's similar to that. What's important here is don't, that we don't use real thresholds. Um, the reason is we later will see that we have to differentiate that function. And as you know, um, a threshold function, um, you cannot differentiate. But a sigmoid function, of course, you can do. In the final end, uh, it's not directly used as marked here uh, in, in yellow. Uh, there might be an additional slope and additional shift value in order to um, to shift the function to the right or to the left. And you see already, I talk about weights for the inputs that are factors. I talk about um, additional variables within the activation function. So we, it looks like we get a huge amount of degrees of freedom, a huge amount of parameters we might have to change in order to create an even better neural network. And we will come to that, how to do that step. 
Finally, it gets maybe a little bit more complicated, like uh, illustrated uh, within the next picture. Now we have three input layers, and you see everyone is connected to the next layer, and always we have those waiting um, values, so waiting variables. But you uh, might already see that it finally is similar to matrix multiplication or vector multiplication. And that's indeed something we can use here and that can be done in parallel. That can be done with extremely smart algorithms or maybe we go not from a for uh, standard PC, we go to uh, GPUs, so graphical, um, um, what's the name? GPUs, processor units. So, oh God. Um, but it's all about those weights and how everything is connected. Um, um, okay, I get already a question, show the real examples. Um, it's not only, the, I will show the real examples, uh, of course, but it's, it's, uh, that you should learn a little bit about the methodology behind, or at least that's, that's um, what I like to do always, is that you see how things are developed and maybe you want to do similar things by your own. And um, so therefore I mentioned, it's an introduction I'll talk here about. Um, it's how to make a machine teachable, how that the machine learns by its own and getting better and better and better. And um, of course, uh, it's not quite easy to finally create a, a trading machine. Uh, if it would be that easy, you would have seen uh, already thousands of them. And I s assume you haven't. So it's on the way. And yeah, I will show a little bit uh, part of that way to those uh, trading machines. So we, we see we need all those weights. And finally, we need to, to uh, optimize everything here. In order to do that, we first of all need what I call here um, a cost function. And the cost function is a key figure for the quality of our neural network. Think about trading, it will be obvious. We, we may think about just profits. Uh, you know that uh, from, from other webinars that profit is not everything. Uh, we have to think about drawdowns as well and stuff like that. But for the moment, just to think about profits. So we need, if we have such a neural network, which has an input, which has outputs, we, we, we need a measure, a key figure, in order to, to, yeah, to, to have a single number for the quality of our neural network. We, have, we need a single number in order to, to know whether it's getting better or worse uh, if we change our parameters. And therefore, we need that quality function or cost function. Um, for my example about uh, the, the, hand, uh, the number handwriting recognition, it's easy. It's something like the hit rate. Uh, and that one we would like to maximize um, in order to get every picture right labeled. And so there we would use the hit rate. The hit rate for trading is one of those examples I will uh, show um, in a couple of minutes for, for trading. Um, and uh, two others is real trades and um, rate of change expectations or um, um, yeah, you, you will see. Um, so when we have that cost function, um, it finally, a, a new network for uh, the handwriting recognition would work the following. So as I illustrated already, input is a picture, 28 times 28 pixels. Uh, so we have our 784 uh, input layers, uh, input nodes, and then we have the new network. And that neural network might have 10 output layers, uh, 10 output nodes, each representing one of um, the, the 10 numbers from zero to nine. Think about an output in terms of a number between zero and one. Then we might say, okay, the highest number wins. So if the highest output number is here at eight, 
for example, 0.71, and for all the other output nodes, it's um, smaller than um, 0.78, then we would label that picture with an 8. So we have we would have done our job right. Uh, so we have recognized that this picture represents an 8. And then we can um, calculate the hit rate for thousands of those pictures. But when we start, we might do things wrong and we would not identify all pictures with an 8 being identified as an 8. We might identify this as a 3 or something similar. And um, so we, we would start with a low hit rate and then try to, to get better. That means we have to um, change our weights within our neural network. And you remember we have maybe hundreds or thousands of uh, weighting factors and uh, other variables in our activation function. So that's a tough job to uh, now get things better by changing parameters, knowing that we have hundreds of those. And to do that, we use the methodology gradient descent. And what we are really doing here for neural networks um, uh, is that we start with random values for those weights within the neural networks. We really start with random numbers. And then the procedure is the following. We, with our selection of weights for every um, connection node, then we calculate for all our test samples the output. Taking a picture, throwing it into the neural network, and that then get it uh, labeled. And then we asked, is it right? Is it, uh, is it wrong? And then we can calculate our hit rate. That's called the forward propagation within the neural network. And now the task is to vary the weights of the neural network in a way that the hit rate gets better. That's called backward propagation. So we, 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 it's similar to trading strategies. You remember, you may have an EMA and thinking, oh, should I go for EMA 20 or 25? And then we, we change it and then we see, do we get better equity or worse equity? And here it's the same, but now we go for the hit weight uh, in, in that example. Um, but how can we do that most clever? I mean, we have hundreds of, of um, degrees of freedom or um, weights. And the methodology is called gradient descent, and it's quite simple. Uh, if you look to the pictures, then you can immediately realize how simple it is. So you start somewhere within that function. We, What we do here, what is illustrated within that picture is that we want to find the minimum within that function. Okay, in this case, it's easy even uh, we can do it uh, just by calculating if you see the function then you know exactly where the minimum is but doing it in a more sophisticated function with uh, hundreds of variables it's not that straightforward um, and remember we have for example 60,000 input uh, data sets so it's a huge amount of data what we do is we are somewhere maybe here. And now we ask ourselves, should we change direction to the right or to the left, doing that <clears throat> um, weight smaller or higher? And what we simply do is we make a small step sideways, and then we know the slope. And that's quite well. If we know the slope at that um, point, then we know the direction where to go. And of course, we go down the road. So that means knowing the slope no, means knowing the direction of in which direction to go if you want to find the valley, uh, in case you want to minimize a function. And then we repeat step um, those steps until the slope is zero. And the good thing is you can do that even in multidimensional spaces. Here's it might be the Alps, uh, so thinking about uh, real mountains and valleys. Uh, we might start somewhere here, and it, it's similar like <clears throat> doing one step to the east within 
um, the mountains and one step to the south and um, then we know the direction of where to go. Um, um, okay. Um, I, I wait here just one comment and I want to share with that. Um, um, I apologize, but trading is not an engineering problem. It's closer to game theory with expectations about the future. Otherwise, we risk doing a complicated data mining exercise. The future will not be like the past. That's a quite important sentence. But think about what are the basic rules which um, create the price at, at uh, any uh, stock exchange. Finally, it's gear and fear. So it's what people are doing. and. People are doing things in patterns and finding those patterns, those typical behaviors, you can see in the price and exactly finding the right patterns is what we now do here um, yeah, with, with engineering, but it's exactly looking for the right decisions and we can teach ourselves in the past and it's the same like any professional trader. He has been teached by the past and now doing something in the future, hopefully with profits at the final end. But I would not agree with the one sentence, the future will not be like the past. No, at stocks or uh, forest pairs, the fundamental behavior repeats. It's not that I, I say um, every price movement is absolutely repeatable. No, that, that's not my, my, my telling. Um, but the, the logics behind, they repeat because the people work always the same and uh, think in the same manner. And that's why we use now another methodology, and in this case, uh, neural networks, in order to find those, um, let's call it pattern or um, behavior. So we can do that gradient decent methodology and we always find the local minimum. Minimum. It's not um, automatically finding the global minimum, but at least we find a good solution. If we use different starting values, we may find an even lower value here. Um, um, <laughs> There's another comment now. Okay, thanks for commenting. Very interesting patterns in behavior. Yeah, but that's exactly what I think is um, price movement in, uh, at uh, stock exchange. It's, um, yeah, it's behavior. Anyhow, so now back to gradient descent. So we have a methodology, and the good thing about that kind of methodology is if you do it right, you can do that kind of calculation in one step for all weights. You don't have to, have to do it in, in, uh, for each um, parameter, each degree of, of freedom individually. You can do it in just one step. It's a mighty tool um, if you do it right. And uh, those tools like Python and TensorFlow have uh, the right uh, algorithms for that. So it's a very fast methodology. Now let's go back. Um, for, for our mathematical methods here once again. When you try to, 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 to learn things um, with, um, with data, then normally what you're doing is a data splitting. So you have lots of data, historical data later for, for trading, or you have those pictures of uh, handwritten uh, numbers, and you take maybe 80% as um, training data. And with those data, you train your new neural network, and then you use the, the, the rest, the 20%, as a validation data set. And that means um, you, you look with a trained neural network, how does it work on data which have not been part of the training? So it's an out of sample test. And if you find good results there as well, then you say, good, good job, I go for that neural network. And that's something we, we have to keep in mind um, always. But now let's start with trading. How do I do the transition to trading? 
just as an illustration here. So we have here three input layers. And a little bit, as, as I mentioned already, um, I will use now as input in order to do a decision just historical prices. So I'm somewhere in the history and I want to do a decision as I want to do it maybe now that I say, should I open a long trade on Euro US dollar or a short trade or should I not trade at all? So whatever. But the input for that decision should be the price history. Okay. And think about, for example, H1 data or H4 data. Then one input might be to say, okay, I look for the rate of change between the close of the last candle and the close of the candle before. So it would be the rate of change for one hour. So the percentage movement within the last one hour. The next input layer might get <clears throat> the number of what has been the percentage change if I look back two hours and four hours and eight hours and 16 hours, whatever. So um, one uh, thing might be to, to go here exponential. So in terms of one, two, four, eight, and so uh, or we might use all the data, one hour back, two hour back, three hour, four hour, five hours, whatever. So that is the input for our decision. Then comes for, to the neural network here, and then we create the output. And then we do the optimization. But first, b before we do it, let's ask what is the potential output? And as I started already to say, okay, let's be, be very low level first. Just ask ourselves the question, would, will the next candle be a long or a short candle? So will the price go up or down? Nothing else. It's not already a real trade. It's, let's call it for the starting here, the simplest, simplest question. Is the next candle long or short? Then you know already we can deal with hit rate as um, a good cost function in order to, if, uh, to see whether our prediction is right or not. So that might be the simplest algorithm for, for trading. And, um, but anyhow, it might be a starting point to say, is the next candle long or short? But before I show the results, I just want to um, mention already some, some pitfalls here. Um, we can train a network and look whether our decision is uh, or our network is good or not. But when it finally comes to trading, we have to do that learning process and applying process dynamically. If you have uh, seen other webinars from my, um, then you, you know what I mean with dynamically. Just let me use a picture from a previous uh, webinar, what I mean. So what we normally do is, um, you see here maybe 10 years history of, I don't know, which uh, it, uh, maybe Euro, US dollar. And if we want to judge, if we want to know the quality of what we are doing here, we, we can do that walk forward methodology. What does it mean? We go far back into the history and go for the green window here. So it's maybe the year 2001 and the year 2002. Within those data, we optimize our neural network. And then we, so that's a good thing about uh, stock prices and historical data. Then we, whatever we have learned within the green box is we can apply now in the future, which has not been part of the training set. And so we, we go into the, the red box here and apply our rules and see how we behave now in the future. And then we repeat that step iteratively. So we, we move our learning window and we move our applying window. And if we go 
through the entire history, then if we add up all, let's call it traits, or later it will be the hit rate of the uh, prediction long or short, um, it's always applying our rules in the future, only with knowledge of the past. That's a good thing about trading because we can simulate um, those results and that's called the walk forward methodology, which is quite useful here because we don't want to use our training data and finally show the results within the training data because it's not applying our rules in the future. And therefore that methodology is that important. And that's something we have to to keep in mind that we do um, um, everything with uh, that kind of methodology. So the other thing is, um, so the, the principle is select a time period in the past, calculate a new new network, and then apply it in the near future, and then repeat everything. The other pitfall in general for for stock prices or uh, forex, so any any prices uh, here is that they are close to random. Um, and we have shown that <clears throat> mathematically, that they are close to random. Therefore, any learning task is always difficult because our data are to some extent random or noisy, uh, you might call it as well. So it's always difficult. If you don't know the result exactly, then mm, yeah, it's difficult to learn. But that you know from trading as well. And the next pitfall here we, we, we have is um, that our data sets are small. Think about uh, Mark Zuckerberg and uh, Facebook data. He, he has two um, billion customers um, sharing data with him, uh, likes, posts, and so on. A lot of data. When we go for prices of um, a stock exchange or forex uh, um, prices our data sets are small and you have to know that going for smaller time frames would increase the amount of data but they don't increase the information so just going for smaller time frames is not the solution um, because yeah there is no additional information in smaller time frames and finally if it comes to trading we don't we, as always, we don't. Uh, we should not forget that we have costs like spread and commission. Why do I mention everything like this here? Uh, all those four points. There's um, quite a lot literate literature um, about neural networks and trading. Uh, you can find yeah, publications from universities, but 90% of all those people are forgetting the costs. So they show results without costs. Yeah, that's not good, you know, from trading. Um, and doing everything here dynamical is also something which most of the people are not doing. I will do now both, but uh, not everything um, simultaneously. So my real results here are going, uh, I, I want to share with you four, uh, three results. One is about the hit weight of H4 data. H4, by the way, is a good compromise between um, an H4 candle has a yeah a certain height or a, an average number of how big the movement is. Uh, it's not like M1. M1 is uh, extremely small. Uh, of course, D1 would be higher, uh, but then I have less data. So it's a good compromise. So therefore, I, I go here for H4 data now. And the first question I want to ask myself, can I create a new network which is able to predict the next candle, the next H4 candle? And is that candle long or short? Going for that, you know, especially for Forex uh, prices, um, in principle, Hmm. You have a chance of 50%. Just saying long or short, um, typically then you have a hit rate of 50% because sometimes it goes up and sometimes it goes down. So therefore, it's more or less a 50-50 um, question. If, if you would go for, for DAX or S&P 500, it would be different because they have a bias uh, to, to the long direction. 
But for Forex, it's typically 50-50. So if we are just random, um, then we would get a hit rate of 50%. Therefore, if I now show data, we, I, um, I look for the difference to 50%. And now maybe you get overwhelmed with that funny, funny picture with lots of colors. But let's look a little bit more in detail and uh, start stepwise. In principle, I have investigated um, 29 different symbols. Uh, so a lot of Forex pairs and additionally gold. And what you can see here is um, as x-axis, just uh, the time. So I went back in the history the last uh, 12 years. And uh, what's the y-axis? The y-axis here is the offset to 50-50, meaning if you see numbers here like 1 or 2, let's start with 1, then it would mean my hit rate of predicting the next candle is 51%. First question of you might be, well, that's low, but it's already better than 50-50. And I have asked myself the question as well. And originally, I, I thought starting that kind of uh, neural network activity, oh, maybe I get hit rates of, let's say, 65%. So in, in, in that scale, it would be a 50. Um, hmm. But think about if I would reach that kind of number, what that means. <clears throat> it would be nearly the holy grail. So um, maybe my expectation was wrong. On the other hand, I have here numbers <clears throat> which are between 1 and 4%. So I'm between 51 and 54% hit rate for all those uh, Forex pairs. Now, let's, uh, let me comment a little bit of why it's starting that crazy in the beginning and then it's, it's more or less flattened down here to uh, looks like um, saturation, which is right. Simple reason, if you start then you don't have that much data. So the hit rate is, is a little bit more oscillating. If you don't have that much history, then you, you, you are a little bit more on the, the, the uncertainty side. Finally, it works. It works not that well for every underlying, but at least I can achieve hit rates in the range of 41 to uh, 51 to 50 four percent with those kind of newer networks and the other good thing is it's running dynamically that means what you see here is always the result within those red boxes so always getting a new network applying that new network to the near future and then calculating a new neural network and so on and so forth. So it always results in the future. So using my rules from the past and applying them in the future and then summing up all the results and I get what you have here. So it's not overwhelming, I know, <laughs> but it's better than 50-50. So in principle, I'm able to predict a little bit better than random the near future, the next candle, and um, the next H4 uh, candle. So that's one thing. One example, applying those kind of techniques of neural networks exactly as we discussed previously. The next result is, now I ask myself, hmm, if I have a prediction for the sign of the next candle, then I might even optimize to the rate of change. So thinking about, okay, let's go long for the next candle. And then the hopefully long candle has a certain height, a certain rate of change. And I can sum up all those predicted rate of changes and optimize my neural net against the sum of rate of change. So it's already a little bit more like trading because if I predict the rate of change of the next candle, it's already something like the trade I want to do. 
and of course um, um, Oh, first, um, just another question here. What would an uh, autoregressive model achieve? Probably more than 50% as well. Did you try? I have not tried exactly the model you mentioned, but um, you will see um, for, for other kind of models I have used, uh, that's already hard to get in that range of 3% above 50-50. Uh, that's really hard and the reason why it's that hard is because those prices are close to random um, so i cannot really comment on on the model you uh, mentioned here but um, i know from other ones uh, like classifiers for example um, that they have a real hard job to do it but now let's go back to predicting the rate of change and summing those rate of changes up then the result looks like this. You see, um, now we have really something like equity lines. And <clears throat> if you look uh, for the, 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 the upper part here, you have already equity lines. If uh, that would be um, multiplied by any euro number already my trading account, it would be quite well. Once again, everything is done dynamically. So it works really good, but not for all. There are underlyings which tend to be not be that good predictable. And uh, you see um, here some which are close to zero, but at least um, the, the everything uh, above about here would be really profitable trades, even if I incorporate the cost of trading spreads commission and so on and so forth. So, and once again, it's dynamically. It's not just showing you something like a backtest. It's not a backtest. It's always a result in the future based on data of the history. And that's not uh, like other um, backtesting uh, graphs you have seen um, as one or the other uh, place. Um, good. Um, there is a special question about um, what are the, the, the input values. In my case, it's um, seven. Um, it's seven candles history. That's so seven. Uh, I go one hour, uh, one H four candle back, two H four candle back, and so on and so forth. And uh, those seven numbers are the input for the decision going long or short. Um, no indicators. Uh, you don't need here any indicators. The indicator, if there would be a good indicator, that is automatically um, incorporated in the neural network. You see, because you, you combine all those input values, it's, if you think, of, for example, about an SMA, the SMA is adapted here by its own, because if you sum those seven historical um, um, candles, simply add them up and then divide them by, by seven, then it would be an SMA seven. So it's, um, it's quite simple. You, you get any indicator directly here without knowing what kind of indicators a new network is adapting. Uh, but it's quite similar. Um, but it's a little bit black box. Um, it's uh, like like the normal candles, yes. Um, good. Uh, if there are any further questions beyond and maybe some interest of additional chats just write me an email uh, you will see my email address later and then we we might pick up any chance to to uh, communicate further uh, maybe tomorrow or any any other time so that is now a forecast for the rate of change and we see already we get the results which are promising but not maybe good enough Finally, just one step further, and now I, get, I go for a static result. So it's not, but it's real trading. Um, I have to do additional jobs here, as you can see. So, but uh, it's not finished, but um, whenever I do things like that, 
I always uh, start um, static and then do the next step um, and do that uh, walk forward methodology. But now I would want to have real traits. And what I did here is I said, okay, for the history, I can simulate traits. And what I have done is I went to every candle and have started at every end of a candle a trade with a fixed stop loss in percent and a fixed risk um, a fixed risk reward ratio and a fixed direction and I will start here with just always long trades. If you go for historical data, you know for each candle whether that kind of trade would have been profitable, yes or no. And my, my trade here is always 100 euro. Why do I mention that? Because now I can label the history. I can label each candle to say, here is a good point. Now it was a good thing to go to open that long trade. So you remember the, the handwritten numbers? They are already labeled. That so we know that kind of picture is an eight. Now I label the historical data and label in a way in the history, at that point in time, it would have been a good decision to open a long trade with that fixed stop loss and that fixed risk reward ratio. And then I try to teach the neural network to say, please identify the good point in time to open those kind of trades. In my case, it's just uh, yeah, one value uh, for stop loss and one value for take profit. And then the decision is only yes or no. Should I open? Yes or no. And teach the neural network with the historical data. In the final end, we might think more complicated, like the neural network should tell you the stop loss value and the value for the take profit. But let's start simple. Results look like this. So in this case, it's all Euro Japanese yen, and it's just different kind of neural networks with different number of input layers, out, um, hidden layers, and so on. Um, so, but everything is static. Now the y-axis are euros, and we see um, equity lines for the last uh, 14 years, um, which are positive, not too positive because that would be amazing, but um, then it would be alarming. But the result, result here is static, so that represents something like a backtest. It's not already walk forward methodology. That's my next step. But let's do one step after the other. Why do I do this step nevertheless? What I want to show myself is that at least if I do it static, it should be profitable. If not, it would be quite strange if any walk forward methodology would work better. In principle, it could, because maybe um, things are changing rapidly and you need always different kind of rules. But normally, everything is much more long lasting than we typically expect. What I see here with that result it works, it work, works not too good, but it's promising. But we need that walk forward methodology in order to have that kind of experiment, what we want to do in future, because finally I want to have my neural network and tomorrow I want to trade with that neural network live and in a real account. But then I want to have more confident that everything would have worked in the history already as well. And so that step is missing. But anyhow, it looks already promising to, to get things up and running in that kind of idea. Well, that's already the first part of neural networks for trading. You see already some results. It's a really exciting methodology to to have things self-teaching because 
I'm not teaching the new network uh, what is a good trade, what is a bad trade. No. The neural network is doing the stuff by its own. It's like that computer algorithm learning chess by playing against himself and getting better and better and better and finally better as any human. So the, the, the logic here is always to have something self-learning and do that kind of job even better than a human. It's a really exciting topic. And I think we can expect a lot of things about that uh, in, in, in already near future. That we have lots of other examples where neural networks are already really good working. You see even, even um, techniques like, like uh, speech uh, recognition, uh, Siri, Alexa, and so on. They use neural networks uh, in order to get the the, the um, the speech being translated into the computer and then finally it, it can create answers and then telling you the answer but they are based on neural networks as well the transition here of neural networks to trading is indeed not straightforward dealing with other kind of problems like like um, uh, handwriting recognition is much more easy than training and the one reason behind is that, that um, historical price data are quite random, quite noisy. And it's not that obvious what the right decision, as you know from trading. It's not that obvious to say, should I get long or short in Euro, US dollar. But we have already first results. We have walk forward results for hit rate above 50%. We have... Um, um, good results already for rate of change. So we have already something like equities. Uh, walk forward methodology as well. Um, for trading, I'm not already through, but static results are there already. So yeah, there's something else coming. You can be sure and um, you will realize everything here. Um, because of course, I will talk about those in webinars and finally if uh, they are really good those um, trading results uh, with neural networks <clears throat> they will go into the jfd basket portfolio as well but that's a different topic jfd basket portfolio is a topic for our next week uh, talk uh, you will find on the jfd uh, web page as well so it was an introduction to uh, neural networks i hope you get at least a feeling of how that works and how what kind of methodologies uh, are used when you deal with neural networks. Um, it's not that easy, I know, but uh, therefore it was more introductional than uh, already. Yeah, everything fixed, everything ready. Um, if you have any further questions or if you want to get in touch with me um, directly, no problem, just send me an email. You see the email address here once again. Uh, if you have downloaded um, the slides and you have it written as well. Um, but anyhow, I think we will, uh, you will work out uh, how to reach me. Okay, that's for what today. Next week, as I mentioned, JFD Basket Portfolio. And uh, then the week after, we go for some other predictions about um, trading. But you will see that. Okay, thank you very much. And have a nice evening and a good time. Bye-bye.